no decision yet in the trial of four men accused of plotting to kidnap and kill Governor Gretchen Whitmer. The jury is now heading home from the federal courthouse in Grand Rapids. Verdict watch now stretches on until tomorrow. Mike Kravcik tells us the request from the jury today that was ultimately denied by the judge. The jury came back with just one question, a request for a transcript of witness testimony. It's not ready yet, and even if it was, Judge Robert Yonker says he would deny the jury's request. He told them to focus instead on their own written notes and impressions they formed while listening to witness testimony. More than 40 people testified over the course of 17 days. If you type it all out, the transcripts of the trial would total 3,400 pages. Hanging in the balance, the fate of four men accused of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer over the state's COVID-19 restrictions in 2020. They could take their time and this could take several days. Federal prosecutors presenting 400 pieces of evidence, including videos of tactical training, social media posts, messages and conversations secretly recorded by FBI informants and agents undercover who infiltrated the group. Prosecutors say the four men on trial each had their own role in advancing the kidnapping plot. There's a lot of evidence that took place in this case. Defense attorneys argued the so-called plot was all talk, fueled by undercover FBI agents and informants who entrapped the suspects. The four men are charged with conspiracy to kidnap, which carries a possible life sentence. Adam Fox, Barry Croft, and Daniel Harris are charged with conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction, another maximum sentence of life in prison. We're encouraged that they're taking the time and they're deliberating what, what they're supposed to do, so we'll see what happens. In total, jurors have 10 charges to consider among the four men. They have to uh, figure out where they want to shape the case and go through each defendant and each count one by one. So that's going to take some time. Matthew Schneider is the former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan. Schneider says without the transcripts, it could take jurors longer to come back with verdicts. In total, the jury has deliberated for 16 hours and they'll be back here in federal court to resume on day three of those deliberations. Again, jurors have to decide 10 different verdicts for the four suspects on trial. It knew this hour enrollment is down at 80% of Michigan's 15 public universities in the last decade. That according to a new report from the Michigan Association of State Universities. Our political reporter Rachel Louise Jazz tells us what's getting some post-secondary students back to school. The report found that of the more than a dozen state universities in Michigan, only the University of Michigan, Michigan State, and Michigan Tech have seen an increase in enrollment in the last decade. For most of the state, enrollment is significantly down. At Western Michigan University, enrollment has dropped 24% since 2011. At UM Flint, it's down 22%. And at Central Michigan University, enrollment has shrunk by 44%. That's a larger decrease than any other school in the state. In a statement, CMU blames the decline on complacency and dissatisfaction with outdated technology and recruiting practices following a boost in enrollment more than a decade ago. Brandy Johnson, president of the Michigan Community College Association says state universities might be struggling partially because they rely on traditional college age students and the state birth rate is shrinking. So when you have a shrinking pie of students and then a shrinking slice of those students that are choosing to pursue post-secondary, that's really um, what is uh, which what the four-year universities are certainly struggling with. Johnson points out some state community colleges are also struggling. I think it really has a lot to do with the economy. Community college enrollment typically is counter cyclical to the economy. So when the economy is really strong, there's lots of good paying jobs available. Uh, most people opt to take one of those jobs as opposed to enrolling in community college. One huge boost for community colleges over the last year has been the Michigan Reconnect program. The program, introduced by Governor Gretchen Whitmer in February 2021, allows any student over 25 to earn a two-year degree for free. More than 90,000 students have joined the program since. Some colleges um, are now upwards of 10 or 11 percent of students are reconnect students, which is really great. New tonight, law enforcement agencies across Virginia are stepping up to meet a unique need in Ukraine. 7 News Heather Graff with the donation drive to help protect civilians turned soldiers. 
VCU police officer Levin White teamed up with his neighbors and friends who have close connections to Ukraine. I have family in Ukraine, so I know how it feels. And together, they created this nonprofit with the goal of providing support however they can. Very uh, heart wrenching, and but it's satisfying that that we can provide something. In seeing the images from the war-torn country, Officer White was reminded that it's not just soldiers on the front lines during the Russian invasion, but also Ukrainian civilians fighting for their freedom. And he thought his law enforcement family here might be able to help. Obviously, the, the first uh, answer was, yes, we want to help. In layman's term, a ballistic vest is a, it's a Kevlar, it's a bulletproof vest. The Falls Church City Police Department and the Fairfax County Sheriff's Office, just two of many policing agencies across the Commonwealth that answer their call to action. The Sheriff's Office telling 7 News the 110 ballistic vests it offered up were used and in good condition, but their five-year warranty had expired. The vest has a shelf life of five years from a liability uh, standpoint. The department's uh, have to replace the vest after five years. When we caught up with Officer White and his team via Zoom on Tuesday, they had just gotten another donation from the Lynchburg Sheriff's Office. And so far, they say Lift Up Ukraine has collected nearly 1,500 vests, with a 1,000 more still waiting to be picked up, plus other supplies like gas masks and helmets. It's going to make a huge difference. Huge. Several shipments of the protective gear have already been sent overseas. And the hope is that these bulletproof vests from Virginia will save lives in Ukraine. It, it makes us feel so good inside and, and happy that making some difference.